So we're understanding this term black, the etymological standpoint, the spiritual standpoint. Let's get back into this term racist and understand what it really means. And we're gonna go into racism. All right, so let's take a look at this. Once again, this is someone who uh, is supposedly a racist because she wore a Van Nels shirt. All right, now let's take a look at this suffix. We're looking at the suffix ist, I-S-T. Now, we gotta get our own etymological dictionary because somebody is constantly changing definitions. But you're gonna be able to understand what something means because you're gonna be intelligent enough to see and apply your knowledge so that when somebody's lying to you, you're gonna be able to see through the lie. All right, ist, the suffix ist, I-S-T. What does that deal with? It means to have a love for something or a great concern for something. So when we're talking about the term ist, the term ist, has to do with a love or a passion for something as opposed to a hate for something. All right, so if I say a violinist, that's somebody who loves or plays the violin. A bicyclist has a love or a passion for bicycles or riding bicycles. A pianist, someone who loves and or plays the piano, all right? Anytime you're seeing the word is, it has to do with someone who has a love for that particular thing. An artist is someone who loves art. So we're understanding now, I hope y'all seeing that any other time you're using the term is, it has to do with a love for the thing that's at the front of it. Okay. But they want to tell us that when you don't like somebody because of the color of their skin, that is racist. So let me ask a question. And I hope y'all like that paying attention. And again, if you're in the house, check in. Leave a comment. Let me know you're listening. Please. Thank you. But let me ask this question. Is there a problem with loving somebody who is of your same race? Anybody? Somebody answer that question. I'm listening. If y'all listen, I need you to say something. Is there a problem with loving the people of your same race? Is there a problem with loving your family? Is there a problem with doing things for, if I got a business, I'm running my business, is there a problem for me? to employ my family members. Why is that, Why, would that be a problem? Okay, so then somebody tell me, what is the term that we use to show that we have a love for our family or a love for our people? What is the term that we use? We got artists for people who love art. We got machinists for people who run machines or love running machines, all right? Botanists for people who study plants. What do we call somebody a love for our own people? What, what do we call that? Somebody, what's the term for it? Somebody help me. Because there should be a term because in every other word, the term is, the suffix is, means I have a love for the thing that's in front of it. So if I love my people, what do I call that? This is my race. What do I call it? It should be racist. But somebody has bastardized the term. And I need y'all to understand that these letters and these syllables, these words, they have a frequency and they resonate with your body. There's a vibratory frequency of every letter and, and syllable and word. So if we got this term race, and then is supposed to mean love or passion or concern for something, 
then what do I call it when I'm supposed to love my people, my race? It's supposed to be racist, but some kind of way. They have mixed this word racist and prejudice. And prejudice really means I'm prejudging you. I'm saying, I don't like you because of this. Or I'm not a fan of yours because of that. A prejudice when I don't even know who you are. But they've turned it racist. When now when you turn around, you say, now they made you not even want to say you racist. You say, oh, no, I'm not. I'm, that's like the worst thing you could possibly call somebody now. Somebody has bastardized the term, and I need you to understand that's not by mistake. Because when you say that, oh, I'm not racist. You said, no, I don't love my people. Y'all ain't paying attention. I know we do not get the power of words. That's why we got this class. That's why there's this class. Power of word art. That's why. Because you're not getting that every time you speak, you are spelling Every time you say something out of your mouth, you're creating a contract. So when you say, oh, I know I am not racist. I don't love my people. And vibrationally, that is resonating within all of us who say it out of our mouth because somebody has made us think that there's something wrong with loving your own people because racist it's not supposed to have anything to do with hate. It has to do with a love for something. Somebody's taken that word, they bastardized it, now, now they make you not even want to take hold of it or, or to be, but you want to you be proud of other things like being black when that really means a degradation of who you are. But when you're talking about loving something over here, which you should be loving, oh no, we th no we're not. And then that vibrates on you. I know we're not getting it. I'm going to give you a couple of other examples. Sovereign. Sovereign deals with you having a power of self, mastery of self. That's moving closer to God. But somehow they've taken this word and paired it with a, another term that means slave. Sovereign means godly. C citizen means slave. And they bastardize this term to where people are afraid to even use it. When it means that you're in control of self. It means you're walking as a God that you are. And for my new people, I get it. I just need y'all to pay attention. So somebody has taken this term and they bastardized it to the point where people are afraid to even use the term. One of the things about sovereign, once again, they've taken this term citizen. Citizen means slave. And then they coupled it up with sovereign. And now you say sovereign citizen. And they turn it into a, a, they bastardize the term to where, oh, that means a terrorist. If you think these people who are playing this game don't understand how powerful words are and the fact that they are contracts and they resonate with your very spiritual essence, you need to guess again. And you need to start studying what's really going on with these words and these terms. Conspiracy theorist, another bastardized term. A conspiracy is where a group of people work together to do harm against somebody else. They conspire, they join in as a group. So now when people start catching on to that, and then they start speaking the truth and the facts about, hey, these people are running this game over here. Then they, it's a conspiracy against the people. So now they put this term theorist on there. Like these people, they just have these ideas. They're dumb. They're crazy. They don't know what they're talking about. When the truth is, the conspiracy, quote unquote, conspiracy theorists are the ones who tell you the facts about these people are running a conspiracy against the public, but they want to put the term theorist on there and then turn it into a situation where, oh, these people are crazy or they're terrorists going against the quote unquote government. We're not even going to that, ti that title because that goes on for way too long. That's a whole session by itself. So we're understanding that there is a situation where these words, they are truly 
spiritual contracts that are resonating with every cell in your body. And when you speak them, you are creating your third dimension. You are. And so if you're not cognizant of what you're speaking, somebody's going to have you speaking something that damns yourself. And this includes melanated people running around, call themselves black and African American and descendants of the slaves. I'm going deeper into that too. By the way, for those of you all who are studying law and you've been with us for a while, check out the SF-181 form and look on there and find out the fact that when it says white on that SF-181 form, it's talking about melanated people. I've gone through that. You can find that session on YouTube, UNA Republic on YouTube. I'm saying to you, we've got to come into an understanding of the things that we say, they're contracts, and they have spiritual ramifications. So getting back to the term racist, I need it to be made clear. And we want to stop using that, and we want to stop saying, oh, I'm not racist, because what you're saying is, I don't love my people. You don't even need to come out and say I'm racist. You don't need to say that. But don't let them keep using that term because the term that really should be used there is prejudice because that's what it is. It's just prejudice. You're prejudging someone based on whatever it is. It could be their skin color, their hair, the way they speak, the place they're from, whatever. You're prejudiced, not racist.